Hey, what's going on, everybody? I'm your boy, Retro Bliss, and you are on Retro Bliss Rewind. We're going to have a fun show tonight. We're going to be talking about game controllers and game controller oddities and just some uh, really neat accessories for different consoles and things. And so we're just going to talk about some different things tonight. We're going to have uh, Mike from Mike's Gaming Gala come to the stage and Brian from BD Retro Mods. We're just going to have a fun time tonight. What's going on, fellas? Not much. How's it going? Oh, not too bad. Um, uh, I don't even know where we begin here. Um, what do you think? How how should we? We uh, should start? Uh, we should probably do it like we did last episode. We each take a turn. You can bring us up full screen to show what we're showing, and then come back so we can all talk about it. And then okay. we move on to the next person, and they show one, and the next until we're all out of what we want to show. Okay, I have probably the least amount to show. So, so you shouldn't start. I should probably. I shouldn't start. You shouldn't, shouldn't start because then you'll be in the rotation longer. <laughs> okay, who should start then? I should probably start. You know I've got tons of crap. All right, let's go then. All right, why don't we start with, let's start with the original Xbox. So the early, mid-2000s um, was full of a whole pile of really cool um custom controllers a lot of them uh, particularly for the playstation and the xbox a lot of them didn't really work very well They're like evil dead has a chainsaw controller uh dragon quest has a little slime controller they're not particularly good controllers to play with but this one here uh the gamester for the original xbox actually feels really good to play with um what they've done is they've taken they've put in put action buttons here but for the triggers, they're actually like gun triggers that you can press. It feels really good on the inside of the grips. There's the extra buttons for your, your play, so you don't have to lift off the sticks to press your buttons. Um, it does even have the D-pad. It is a fully functional controller. Uh, I don't play with it much, but I picked it up because it is really, really cool. Like, uh, it, PG, it's PG to say badass, right? It's badass. Um, and, and you just feel really good, especially with certain games. Whenever like you want to kind of feel like you're pulling the, uh, the trigger on a gun, it feels really good. This is one of the few specialty controllers that I think um, is, is good enough to be in your regular rotation of playing with. I'm sorry. I meant to, I meant to, um, what I want to do is I wanted to get, you in the big picture and it's not working out too good oh that's okay we can all we can all have it's our... not working out so just we're just going to keep it the way it was sorry no if you just go back to our our three okay the regular three no nope, and then we can work then out. we can talk because i've already shown it this is a really cool controller guys okay oh right, so we're doing a rotation yeah so we come okay. full we the shape they show it then you come back to this and we can all talk about it Oh, okay. Well, I like that. That's pretty cool. So, what kind of games does that play? It will play absolutely every Xbox game. So, on the inside here, I don't know if you can see because it's a little dim in my room here, but, like, that's the uh, B and Y buttons, and that's the A and X buttons. So, while you're gripping the gun, your, your inside fingers press the face buttons. So, you've always got these on your, your thumbs on the thumbsticks. Um, and then your fingers on the trigger. And then you've got your black and white uh, back and start and your D-pad down here. But this this is great for shooters. Um, I actually really like it for driving games even. Um, anything where you may want to be moving around and looking around and not have to take your finger off to reload or or jump or do something like that, it's, it's actually really comfortable to play. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, we're not going to be showing the Rob robot, but um, I mean, it's it's a neat shelf piece, but in actual practice, it's it's so not, frustrating. Yeah, it's not it's not the best <clears throat> accessory. I mean, very cool concept and, and everything, but it, and I said great shelf piece, but it was a little ahead of its time, unfortunately. So yeah, for sure. So my next. Yeah, you're next. Okay, so. Um, first controller I think I'll show here tonight is um, the uh, retro, the retro fighters uh, jab oh, gamepad. 
I mean, I'm I'm not I'm not a very good producer, am I? <laughs> <laughs> but uh, um, again, this is a unique controller made by uh, Retro Fighters, and uh, the good news is is um, they were going to be discontinuing it, but I do see that they do have it available for purchase uh, still. It's about twenty five bucks uh, plus you know shipping and stuff, but uh, it's just a real neat concept on the uh, NES controller, and it works. Uh, for the NES and for your uh, PC uh, via USB. And uh, it has uh, the B button, the A button, your select and start. And then up at the top, they mimic the A and B buttons again in trigger form and in the uh, shoulder button form. And then you have your analog sticks, which mimic the uh, D-pad on, on the game. So, um, And then also it has turbo functionality here at the top to have turbo enabled uh, while playing. And I found this to be just a real cool controller, especially for um, like different shmups and uh, uh, games like that uh, to, to play with that I just find a lot of fun. And and it's the one controller that in my opinion got the button layout right for, for the NES, you know, cause when you hold it with your thumb, you know, it's uh, kind of perfect there. You're not having to turn your thumb a different direction yeah, right. to to uh play with so that is so cool i'd love to have that yeah but it's just it's I, really cool oh go ahead oh no i was just gonna say i i like the fact that uh you have the phil we're there we go i'm working <laughs> on it let me do my job i'm working on it in tv i'm 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 the guy in the back back row of the control room being like switch the damn camera Come on. <laughs> um I, I i like the fact that like everything's mapped to that A and B. So if you're playing a shooter, like one of the things I loved about when the original Xbox came out is it had proper triggers on it. And now in that case, they were like actual like analog triggers. But um, but even as buttons, like if you're playing a shmup, it feels so much better to be able to pull that trigger. Oh, for sure, definitely. Like I said this is my go. This is my go-to handheld controller when when hmm. you're playing those games. That'd be interesting playing Mario. Like you run with holding the left trigger and then you jump with the right. I got to, I got to get one of those and try it. Oh yeah. <clears throat> That'd be good for Contra or, um, uh, Castlevania. I don't know. My muscle memory on Contra is so ingrained. <laughs> I, Oh, that I, I would struggle with Contra just, just, just with games that you really, really know. Well, you know, having turbo is always the old school cheat code, right? <laughs> I mean, oh, it's, honestly, especially for control, because you're like, D -d 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 -d. yeah, right. <laughs> so, okay, all right, I'm up. It's hard to be a producer. You're up. But, okay, all right. <clears throat> I'm gonna show this to the uh, the regulars on the channel. Everybody knows I stream. Who are regulars on the channel? And I do a lot of 2600 games, and so. Um, I stream on PC, I emulate, but this works on a PC or a Mac, or actually it works on Linux as well. This is a Trooper 2 uh, Atari 2600 clone. It has two buttons, but these two buttons are the same button. It's just for right of your left. But um, it has beveled edges on the end here, which is kind of nice for comfort. Um, you're, it doesn't dig into your palms when you're playing. But what's nice about it, too, is it has, I don't know why, really, it, it, it says it's nice, but I really don't utilize it. But it has shoulder buttons. So um, when I play through Stella, and for those of you who, who emulate through Stella, uh, you can program um, and map your buttons. So you can actually map these buttons um, within the game, each individual ROM, if you want to. Uh, I'm, I'm the One game that comes to mind is uh, 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 Defender Arcade, where the, it has a bomb within the game. Mm -hmm. You have a fire, and then you have a bomb within the game. If you, if you take the time to do that, and you, you know, um, I prefer if I do that to do it with a pad, but anyway, you could do that. It also has a start and a select button on the front. So, and this is, this is my go-to, and I honestly, I buy bunches of them. <laughs> this, is brand oh, really? new in this is brand new in box, because I stream so much on the program that I, I, I wear them out. 
I wear them out. I do. I wear them out because I play so much. But I love them because I, I get that Atari feel. Um, I get that Atari feel um, when I'm playing the game. And like Mike was saying uh, with the NES um, Contra, it's the muscle memory when you're playing the games and it's the same way for me when i'm playing the atari a lot of atari games and i just prefer to use uh, an atari joystick uh, rather than trying to use a gamepad uh, i was playing space rocks today and even though um it's not asteroids it it you know it is asteroids basically as far as uh navigation is concerned like asteroids too huh it's like Asteroids 2, because it's it got is. like the extra... Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like an Asteroids 2.0. Right. Yeah. So, all right. You're up. That's cool. All right. So, last time we did a controller episode, in case you hadn't seen it, I showed the remote control uh, wireless joysticks for the Atari 2600. And not to be outdone, I, I figured I would come to the sequel and show the wireless head-to-head -head system for the NES. So if you've got your uh, cardigan and your your button-up shirt already, to play some <laughs> Nintendo, you can do that. And one of the things that I, I really like about- the kids had that back in yes, the day. Yeah, well, they're the only ones who could afford it. I certainly didn't have it when I was a kid. That's right. Um, one of the things I really like about it, and this, like, my my box isn't the best, but it's got everything in it, um, and e and even wrapped. But one of the things I like so much about it is I can't help but think that the unit that senses the infrared um, kind of looks like a Genesis, and you plug it into your NES. Actually, it kind of looks like a PC Engine, honestly. Kind of, yeah. yeah. Like, but that kind of vibe, right? Like that kind of the really cool late '80s, mm -hmm. early '90s. Everything had to be black and rounded and glossy. Um, the controllers themselves Dude. suck. Um, they are They're uh, cool. Yeah, but you set if you're uh, uh, first player, second player. It's got your select and start. It's got uh, your regular buttons and your turbo buttons up here. And you even have a slow-mo button. So slow-mo on the NES, how they always did it was they just spam the start button. So it like goes... D -d 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 -d. Oh, well you, well, you know, I might get some hate for this, but, you know, half the problem with that controller is the logo in the upper left corner. The claim? <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, you already know once you have that, you're you're like a 50-50 chance, you know, of, of it being great. Of crap. So, right. Yeah. But... Uh, they're, they're really cool. Uh, I played with them once. They don't work very well. Heaven help you if you turn your controller to not I, face. I, I, I was just going to say, I think what I heard about those was like you literally had to point it right at it. So like even it's that... It's got to be pointed. So even that box It doesn't art... have to be exact. You don't, have, you don't need a scope on here to line up. But um, if, if you are playing and you're like, ah, yeah, it, it loses loses communication pretty damn quick. Yeah, it's it's almost like this. Um, uh, uh, at games, use that exact same technology in their flashback wireless controllers because they're just as horrible as those things. <laughs> yeah, mean... they're they're not good controllers, which is why they're you know still oh, yeah. in the wrap. Um, but you're shooting lasers out while wearing your preppy preppy Sunday school outfit. You're good to go, man. <laughs> That's my number two. Well, I think it's kind of fitting because, you know, Poe threw out in there talking about, you know, back to my light gun. Well, you know, I, I brought a light well, gun with me today. Poe so. has the greatest light gun of all time. Yeah. Well, <laughs> aside, that aside from said. that, aside from that Super Nintendo one, the, oh. the one for the military. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Did you get a send in Poe? Is that what you ended up getting? But uh, yeah. I'll no, see no, comes. he's got he's got the original Famicom one. Yeah, it's, oh, like, a it's like a revolver, uh, a six yeah. shooter. Or a, oh, yeah. nice. nice. Yeah, it's real nice. He showed that last episode. You weren't here. 
very cool. Yeah, it was nice. <clears throat> but yeah, so the one I'm going to show um, is the Atari uh, light gun, which, uh, um, you know, this is kind of hard to come by, especially the original ones like this. Um, I know Best Electronics uh, for a while made like a third party type gun, but I don't even believe they sell those anymore. And uh, um, very cool looking piece, kind of, you know, futuristic looking, uh, maybe something you'd see out of Star Wars. A I love bit. I love the look of it. Yeah, it feels like garbage. <laughs> yeah, I mean, and, and again, the click's not. I mean, it's not as springy as the NES one, but uh, but it does have a decent click to it. But I will say, where this is a novelty, just in like the cool factor of having it, the practicality of it is unfortunately not good. I mean, it it will work on your twenty six hundred. It'll work on your seventy eight hundred and your Atari eight bit computers for games that were light gun compatible. But uh, the technology they used in this compared to uh, like the NES Zapper and even the Master System, uh, you know, light gun that uh, uh, it just it just does not work as well as those, unfortunately. And even if you're closer up to the TV with this, um, you're going to still be frustrated. But, uh, it but it's still a cool piece of, you know, just kind of like what Mike showed, you know, in practicality, they're not great, but it's still a nice, neat shelf piece. So. I will say I will say that mine isn't as bad as I've heard that other people have experience with. So there, I think their quality control may have been hit and miss. Maybe the one that I have is a little more hit because I can <laughs> I can accurately shoot things. It's just not the best, and it feels cheap and. Yeah. Well, and yeah. I also and I also think it's the, what television you're using too. Um, I think I think that's a big part of it. Um, I think it for this particular light gun, not all tube TVs are created equal, and I think that's uh, that's some of it as well. And uh, oh yeah, no, having an adapter for the Master System is definitely the way to go. Master um, System is definitely a better gun. Yep. Um, and cannabis asking uh, Arkanoid. I do not. I again, so many great things that I passed up like 20 years ago because I thought it was overpriced. Some guy wanted 15 bucks for. It. I'm like, no, nah, it's a five dollar thing. Mm -hmm. Come on. And I walked away from it. I could have had an Arkanoid controller, but I don't. Yeah, I was gonna say I was like this close. I walked into a game shop uh, in the Columbus area a while back, and they had. Um, you know, box copy of it with the with it, and I just I couldn't pull the trigger on the price. I mean, it's one of those like, don't get me wrong, I like Arkanoid, and I'm yeah. sure I would have enjoyed it, but uh, the price that was being asked, not that it was not technically a fair price, you know, with current market values, it was just it was more than I wanted to spend for that particular piece. How much were they asking for? Uh, I, I if I remember correctly, I believe it was around like uh, 110, 120 because it was a it was complete in box with everything so that's just now, where... now the one that i passed on wasn't complete in box but still 15 bucks why didn't i grab it yeah <laughs> <laughs> so so tell me about this adapter for the s yeah for the 7800 i didn't know there was such a thing so it's the same port right it's just the, yeah. the pins go elsewhere so all you need is a db9 in and a db9 out and inside the wires just go to different pins i didn't know there was even such a thing yeah so the same person who does the 7800 game drive um what is it retro uh why am i drawing but is it retro hq is that who makes that the, the game i'm drive? not sure um, but, uh, cause they're in UK, uh, but I know they make, and Stone Age Gamer is like a U.S. reseller of their stuff. And, uh, um, they make a, a, what they call, I think the mega 7,800 adapter, which, uh, you can use a Genesis controller. You can use the, uh, master system light gun. Um, and some 7,800 homebrew games actually utilize then that third button, you know, that's on the Genesis controller. So really yeah, for stuff. Yeah. So I guess I'm um, have to look into that. Yeah, it's actually I think only like ten bucks. It's it's not an expensive adapter at all, and because uh, I honestly thought about making one for the light gun, but you know, with that one being released at that price, I mean, that's one of those the like point. buy theirs. I mean, I can't make I can't make it by hand for ten bucks. So yeah. Okay. All right. Well. <clears throat> okay. Well, I got. <clears throat> You guys know I, I I'm on a budget, so I I found a 
I was I was going through Facebook Marketplace and I found I was looking. Brian knows a little bit about this. I found this guy. He had a Coleco Vision, and he had a, a, a wheel controller and five games for twenty five bucks. <laughs> and so I picked it up. Now the Coleco Vision needs some help, and Brian has got that for right now. But that's okay. Hey, uh, oh, hey well, I got it working. We just at some point I just got to find time to do the composite mod for you. Well, that's okay. There's no rush. On. I don't need. I don't need it because I got one right now. I just that was the other one. I the other one I fixed for you. Yeah, I got. I'm working. I'm, that's the one I'm playing with right now. But this is what I I I I, I thought for twenty five bucks. This is what I was I didn't have, and this is a driving controller for um, my game Turbo, and I don't know. And, and um, you guys might be able to help me if there are homebrews or any other officially released games that might be compatible with this driving controller. But this uh, section right here, you put the, the regular controller in here and you can use it for like a shifter and to, to uh, you know, put in the buttons and, and, and that kind of thing as you're playing. So, well, and uh, the thing the thing I really like about it because you put the ColecoVision controller in there, and you actually use the joystick as like a shifter. That's what I meant. Yeah. 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 And, and it, that it also takes... did did yours have? Does yours have the uh, the foot pedal? I do not have a foot pedal with mine. Okay. Does it come with a foot pedal? Yeah, there's a foot pedal that uh, normally sits in that spot, and you take it out and you put your controller in it. I did not foot get pedal. a foot pedal with mine. It it still works without it. Yeah, I didn't. I, get I, I like the, I like the foot pedal. Okay, well I didn't get so that's why it was only twenty five <laughs> bucks. But it it takes four C batteries. <laughs> yep. That's how you know it's early eighties. Oh yeah. <laughs> so, all right. So since uh, since Phil was showing that. Which I, I love that accessory. Like if you can only get one accessory for the novelty of it for the ColecoVision, it feels so neat to actually be playing with that uh, that steering wheel, even though it doesn't work the best. But um, it's it's a lot of fun. Um, but since Phil uh, he he told us ahead of time, hey, I'm going to do uh, the ColecoVision. Um, steering wheel, I was like, okay, well, I don't have to bring my steering wheel out, but I can bring my ColecoVision rollerball controller out. And this thing is a really cool, um, it's not my nicest box for sure, but I like this one because like the steering wheel, it's got, oh, let me pull these, uh, things out. It's got spots to put your controller on each side. And then you've got the roller ball, which actually feels pretty good. You got your buttons for both players down here, whether you're right handed or left handed, you can do that. Um, I like that it's almost the size of the system itself. <laughs> it's, uh, it's neat. And this one, like inside the box, everything's mint. It's got the, uh, the nice Canadian call-in number or mail-in card because I'm north of the border where the men are men and the moose are nervous. But uh, <laughs> yeah, the uh, the Coleco roller controller. Not many games uh, play with it. Slither comes with it. Slither's a great game. It's kind of like uh, Centipede, but. I'm I'm a big fan of the uh, roller co controller for the ColecoVision, so, although I don't use it much. So and, is, and now with now with that one though too, keep it, so the one that uh, uh, Phil showed you know, required batteries. That one actually plugs in to the back of your power port on the Coleco, and then yeah, and then the power port plugs into that, so it, like chains it to get, Daisy chains it, yeah, to get power. So this plugs into your system right here, this end. And you plug your power cable into here, and it gets power through that way. So does that work with Centipede for the ColecoVision? Uh, well, so it's got a little toggle switch here, joystick or roller mode. I don't know if it works in roller mode, but if you put in joystick, 
it's it, then it's like the Atari 2600 rollerball. It's uh like it's not an analog rollerball. It's a digital rollerball. So you could still use it. You could use this for every game theoretically. I mean, the original ColecoVision controllers are so bad. I might actually do that. But um, <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a rollerball. It will work for everything in joystick mode anyway. But where where it's really happening is analog modes. Okay, cool. All right, so uh, I think the next one I'll show here, and I got it out of the box too, but um, this was a find that I, I, I got at uh, Video Game Summit uh, in the uh, Chicago area uh, this last summer. Uh, so they had a vendor there who was selling like anything you could possibly imagine for the Turbo Graphics and uh, PC Engine. Uh, he had so much stuff. I mean, if, if money was endless, I would have came home with a lot a lot of things but uh but one of the unique things he was selling and they were brand new because still shrink wrapped um for only 15 bucks uh it was a quick shot controller which you know you see these quick shots all the time for like all the other consoles like the nes all the sega consoles and stuff but i never knew they actually made one for the turbo graphic 16. this is the first time i ever saw it and uh that was one of those like unique things like i gotta get it and uh and again it's pretty uh neat and again it's a the lot like the oh, fact that you were able to find anything for the Turbo Graphics uh, 16 that is fifteen dollars. I know, right? <laughs> you can't you can't get a like a sticker for fifteen bucks. No, I know. <laughs> yeah, Turbo Graphics 16 is so expensive to collect for now. It's it's a shame. I mean, uh, uh, that's why you got to have an EverDrive if you get one. But uh, yeah. Um, but yeah, so with it, I mean, it's, it's a lot like the design you saw in every other quick shot, except again, it's for the turbo graphic 16. Um, you had your, uh, select and run and then your, uh, uh you got your fire button and your other button. And then you had this, which is funny because you literally flip it on and off for turbo. So like, if you want to have turbo for your games, you have that. And then even, uh, you know, the idea is to play it on like a table because it even has the suction cups <laughs> that you can uh, yeah. stick it onto the table. So it don't really jiggle around too much and stuff. So that's like all the aftermarket Atari joysticks, right? They right. all have the suction cups on the bottom. Yeah. But, uh, but overall I think it's, it's a neat, it's a neat controller. I mean, I'm not going to say it's the best thing out there, but it was just, um, just the uniqueness of the fact that they actually made one for the, you know, for the turbo graphic 16 was just very surprising. So, okay. All right. Sorry. I should have zoomed you out. I was preparing. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to be 59 this year. Yeah. So why did we put you in charge of the tech? <laughs> oh, and I see Jason just mentioned with that quick shot. He has it for the NES. Yeah. Like I said, it, it, it's not a bad accessory for, for the right games. Like, like, obviously, I couldn't sit there and play, like, Super Mario Brothers with it, or in this case, no. use, or use it to play Bonk's Adventure. But, you know, give me some blazing lasers with it on the Turbo Graphic or any shmup with the NES. It's it's a very good controller. Hey, um, get back to it. You're talking about tech. I was, I've was i been watching NCIS. You know, Gibbs, he's still using a flip phone, so, okay. Yeah, but you can, have you seen how much they can enhance an image? They're clearly living in the future. Enhance, enhance, enhance. I know, like you can, you can uh, repixel or. Uh, I work in graphics. You cannot. It's not possible. Pixels. It's not possible. <laughs> okay, what I'm going to start to show you, it's I, I'm actually going to show you a number of things all at once, and then I'm probably going to be done. Okay, this is something that you prob most of you probably have never seen, so I'm going to have to zoom in here. Give me a minute here. Okay. This is what's called a Quatari. What you do, this is, you plug this into your Atari 2600 or your Atari 7800. I think this may work. I don't know if this works in the 800XL or not, Brian. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't think it, it does. Well, it should though because it's the same pinout 
Okay. I mean, it really just depends on if the game can support it more. The game than supports it, yeah. Well, the purpose of it is. All right. Let's say you were playing Warlords. Well, well, not no. That's not a good example. Warlords is always a good example. One of the greatest well, Atari <laughs> games. But you can always put two pairs of paddles on there. Yes, it just, yeah. It doesn't matter. But um, I'll give you an example. Uh, one of Brian's games, not not one of Brian's games, one of Brian's controllers, he has a dual stick controller that I play Robot War 2684, one of Champ Games games. So that controller has two inputs, one for uh, player one and one for player two because it's a dual stick controller, right, Brian? Yep. So what I do is the Quatari has two, two cables. One goes in player one and one goes in player two. And then I take this, these, I, I got Brian's controller with me. So what I do is I plug in player one into player one and I plug player two into player three, I think is how it goes. And then uh, because I wanna keep track of my high scores, the way that John Champo has programmed it, if you have a save key or an Atari Vox, this is called an Atari Vox. If you don't know what an Atari Vox is, this will save your high scores, but it also it plugs in to it right here. But on the end, it's got an um, audio jack. And so what you do is you plug it in to it there. And then you plug in like just a simple pair of computer speakers. And then you put in like the game Robot War 2684. And then put in the game. And I'm about to get busy. <laughs> I'm about, I'm about to get busy, man, because this is one of my favorite controllers. I have I have two setups. I have an Atari twenty six hundred. I have two stations. If you guys know my game room at all, I have two stations. I have a twenty six hundred station, and then I have a seventy eight hundred and a separate station, all with CRTs. Well, I Brian had made me a seventy eight hundred. What's a, it could be used for a a twenty six hundred, but it's a two button seventy eight hundred. Uh, controller stick I use on the 7800. Well, I, I keep this at the 2600. And the reason I do that is I love this one at that station, not only for this game, okay, but because I mentioned uh, Defender Arcade. Defender Arcade uh, is a homebrew that I've streamed on the channel a couple times. It is no longer available in the Atari Age store, but um, um, I have shared a link in the description. If you guys go back and, and look at my video uh, that I just recently streamed, I believe there's a link in the description where you can download it. In this, in this uh, layout here, this is Fire Player 1, Fire player two, I think it's the way it's set up, right, Brian? Yep. Okay. Okay. So when you're playing, this is your navigation for player one. You can you can fire with this, but you can use this for the smart bomb. You don't have to have the second joystick and be fumbling around where the other button is. And so I just I just keep this at the second station. So if I want to play Defender Arcade. I just use this at the second station, and this is what I use for that game, and I just use this at the second station all the time, and then I use the other, and so these are my two favorite controllers for the Atari uh, 2600, although for Space Invaders and uh, Asteroids, that's another. That's for another uh, show. 
Yeah, we should we should mention. I don't know if you did, but that's a BD Retro Mod special. Oh, yeah, that was made by our good friend down below. Yep. Yeah, and I guess just as a quick disclaimer on that too, uh, you know, we're purposely. I mean, that that was the exception for tonight, but we were just purposely not showing my stuff tonight. Uh, we were just, uh, mainly because at some point we're looking to probably do another episode. Uh, where it's just the focus on the different things that I do and kind of like an interview type setup, things like that, because uh, I know there's been some folks uh, really interested in learning more about that. So, and but disclaimer also, there's a link in the description of this video. If you want to check out what he's done, uh, you can go to either his Facebook page or his website, check it out. All right. And uh, I, I'm really looking forward to his upcoming Bubsy controller. Yeah. <laughs> you know I'm just going to make that just for you, Mike. <laughs> I, I want one. I want the orange and white fur on it. It can be any cheap controller. Just wrap it with, like, the fur. and you're There good. you go. Um, how many people still – oh, you skipped it. How many people still use the NES Advantage when playing NES games? Um the NES Advantage is good for very few things, in my opinion. I find it not the greatest to use. And my biggest issue is that those big buttons, they will sometimes get stuck. And they won't pop back up. At least on an original. Um, that said, the only time I ever beat Ghostbusters on the NES, I played the game as normal. And then when it came to the, the where you have to walk up the stairs, I paused... I plugged my NES Advantage in, and I went up with the turbo, and then I swapped the controller again, and I and I beat it. Uh, I beat uh, uh, Zool or Gozer, Gozer with the uh, with the regular D-pad. Yeah, no, the Advantage. Uh, I, I mean, overall, I mean, a lot of people like it, and for being a, a console arcade stick. Um, you know, like a first party type one, it, it's not bad. The only thing is, it's just, um, yeah, it's not is, terrible, it, it, but it's personal. I think Mike's probably in the same opinion with it is like, if you actually tear one apart, I mean, the, it's literally just hitting pads just like you would if you were using a D pad. So, so, you know, it's not that true arcade feel like, uh, having something with micro switches in it, you know, and, and that's, uh, and because of that, over time, that can start to wear wear down, which is why, um, you know, it, it's good. But uh, personally, I, if I'm using a joystick, I, I usually prefer to have micro switches with my joysticks. So I I, I agree, but uh, I think uh, Jason makes a good point that for games like Galga on the NES and other kind of arcade oh, yeah. shooters, it it definitely feels good. Like it's mm -hmm. it's it gives you that feeling. But if you were going to go out and be like, I want an arcade style uh, stick for my NES, I'm sure there are other options out there that would be better. And the other thing, I'll just, a little funny point I'll make to that is because someone uh, actually kind of challenged me with the uh, NES advantage was like, uh, because they just loved it. Because again, there, there's a boat of people who just like, they swear by the thing. And they're yeah. just, like, and oh, they're just sure. like, and they're just like, can you mod it to work on the Sega Master System? And I'm like, well, let me see what I can do. So I, 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 I don't have it with me because I didn't realize we were going to talk about that. It was just, uh, but I did. I, I modded a um, NES Advantage controller to work on the Sega Master System, turbo functionality and all. And uh, um, the person who really wanted it loved it. And obviously, I made a second one for myself because why not? But uh, why not? <laughs> but again, it's just um, again, it ha it has its space and and. And compared to other ones of that time period, I mean, it, it's oh, definitely... Oh, compared to that, uh, the oh, Master System one with yeah, the handle? Right. Yeah. yeah. No competition when you take the time. No competition. First, first party of that period, so... Yeah. Okay, I think it's my turn. This one's for Cannabis Kid. Uh, oh, well, opinions on the NES Power Pad. Uh, loved it as a kid. Kind of a uh, gimmick now. But uh, I loved it as a kid. My brothers and I figured out how to do that pretty well. Yeah, Is that but the, the one, one with the glove? 
Is that no, the glove? No, the power. So I do have a power glove. Oh, I should have had the power glove for this. Um, but no, it's a power pad. So you can come back to all of us if we're going to talk about power pad. Um, but it's this big mat you put on the floor and it had circles drawn on it that oh, had connections on it. And so you blue. step on it. But my brothers and I mastered this kind of heel running that we could just kind of like jiggle our feet and in world-class track meet, the guy would just take off. We beat that pretty easily once we figured that out. I know a lot of people use their hands, but we we used our heels. I, I was going to say, in my youth, I could do I could do it the way you were supposed to. I mean, of course, you were afraid the floor was going to eventually fall in. By the way, you were just jumping well. That's why you had to play in the basement, right? So you had to <laughs> but but uh, but yeah. Nowadays, if I was to touch a power pad today, I, I would just be on the floor like this, doing it for sure. <laughs> At our ages, our knees cannot withstand the power pad. Right. Okay, so on to on to the next one. So this one's for Cannabis Kid. Cannabis Kid in the chat has mentioned several times during uh, Phil's live streams. Oh, what about an episode on uh, controllers for disabled people or things that give easier access to video games? And quite frankly, I don't think any of us are really in a position to be speaking with any kind of authority on that. But I do have an ASCII grip for the original PlayStation. Now, this is before the PlayStation had the dual shock controllers, um, but it allows you to play PlayStation games one-handed. So if you are missing a hand, you can, you can play PlayStation games. It's got the, the D-pad up here. Uh, on both sides, it has your uh, square and triangle buttons. So whether you're playing with your right hand and move over here, or if you're playing with your left hand and you want to press over here, you can do that. You've got your L1 and L2 and R1 and R2 down here. You've got your start and select. And then on the back, you have your X and O. So this allows you for a regular kind of the dog bone style first run uh, PlayStation games. Um, you can play all of them one handed because uh, this has all the all the outputs that you need. Probably not the best experience, but for somebody who uh, isn't able, for whatever reason, to use a regular PlayStation controller, it gives them access to it, which, uh, you know, obviously uh, gaming is, and retro gaming now, is something that we love. So anything that makes it more accessible to people, I think is a really cool thing. Um, and this is the... One, I might have another one kind of similar to it for another system in a box somewhere, but this is uh, one of the only ones that I've got that are like that. Yeah, so before I go on to, to my next one, I just, I see there's a couple things in the chat. Uh, the first one about the, uh, about the, uh, being a gimmick to get people to do exercise um <laughs> that that's nintendo's mo isn't it i mean like you on you it's have to, not you, a bad thing though the, like people should be moving around more than they oh, are I, I i mean we, we don't disagree there but i mean we're all we're all right. evidence of that <laughs> right right <laughs> i mean but uh but but it is funny you say that because there seems to have always been something with many of their consoles, not every single one, but um, like what comes to mind, you had the power pad and then you had the Wii fit board for the Wii um, to do stuff. And, and, then, and even just the Wii mote. Cause you're supposed to. Right. Right. right yep. And then, um, then with the switch, uh, was it ring fit? I think is what it is. Yeah. And don't forget Pokemon go. Yeah. I yeah. never got, I would, I was never into Pokemon, but that, that was, and there's still a lot of people that play it. And it, hey, if it gets you out walking around, there's nothing wrong with that. And then but it I, is a gimmick. It's 100% oh, a gimmick. With, without doubt. And and people go eat it up all the time. I mean, so. And uh, yes, there is an exercise bike for the Super Nintendo, just like there is a full proper musical keyboard for the Super Nintendo, which I do not have either of those. Otherwise, they would be on the show. <laughs> <laughs> 
I would be standing up back there, being like, I, 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 "Look, I got a bike." I was gonna say, if that was the case, Mike would be on it the whole entire time, you know, ride, yeah, ride the exercise bike on the show. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> um, but then I see the other one came in about, uh, and I think uh, Phil kind of answered it in the chat that uh, you know, what controller should I play Defender Two properly? So. Um, Anything that allows you to press both but both controller buttons on one controller, right? right. So either either getting like a dual stick <laughs> like I make, or I know there's some like 3D printed couplers you can get for like two yeah, Atari 2600. Um, you know, there's different things out there, but the key is is you got to have that second action button uh, for it, um, and that would be for Defender Two and Stargate, which I think are ultimately the same game. They just changed. Do you know how I always used to do it though? I'd be playing, and the other controller would be on my on the floor, and my toe would be hovering over it, and I'd <laughs> press the button with my toe. Nice. That was always my smart bomb button. <laughs> uh, but then, because uh, also, uh, I'm trying to think what other games did that on the Atari. Uh, Raiders of the Lost Ark, you need a setup like that as well. And I think there's one or two other games, but they're just not coming to my mind right now. But uh, also, Phil, I think you might be muted. Yeah, I was. <laughs> I thought I saw you try to talk there a few times. I'm like, I see the mouth moving, but I'm not hearing anything. <laughs> uh, At least when I was saying right. something stupid, you couldn't hear it. <laughs> Damn kids and your exercise bikes. <laughs> well, when 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 I had when I had Mike zoomed in, I thought I found I decided I got a couple more things to show, so Ah, okay. Well, that works okay. out. We still got time. So, uh, yeah, so the next one I'm going to go ahead and, and show. Um, and again, this one um, it was pretty cool uh, because uh, the system that it's for um, is the Neo Geo. And as we know, that was not a cheap console by any means. And uh, that's another um, one. If you if you tell me you got this for 15 bucks, I'm Coming down to Ohio and punching you in the face. <laughs> I, 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 I did not get it for 15 but I, I got it for a lot less than what you would normally pay for a Neo Geo controller. Uh, I mean, so um, so with that, because um, I actually uh, got had it sent from Japan, and it's a uh, for the Neo Geo AES, and the uh, and if you have a consoleized MVS, it'll work for that as well. That's um, beauty. But uh, ultimately, it's the Fighting Stick Neo from Hori, which um, I don't think this was ever available in the U.S. I could be wrong, but I don't ever remember seeing this ever, you know, out anywhere. Uh, here I don't think States. it was. Um, but uh, it has the same nice clicky joystick as an OEM Neo Geo. And then it had your arcade style um, buttons for A, B, C, and D. And uh, I do believe you could change these out if you want to. Uh, but the thing that really had me sold with this is that um, two things. One, the the top and the bottom of it is actually metal. Uh, then the sides of it is a real nice plastic. Um, so that's a real nice feel. I, and then the second thing was is just um, turbo functionality. So I could you can turn turbo on and off for each one of the buttons, which is great for a number of the Neo Geo games. Like obviously it's not going to help you if you're doing a fighting game. But uh, for a lot of the other arcade style games that were available for Neo Geo, um, it's just nice having that turbo functionality. And uh, it's just a cool little piece um, that had a real good price to it. And I'm just I'm very happy to be able to pick it up. For how I play fighting games, that turbo is still useful. You just hide and you do the small, the short kicks. <laughs> just spam the kick and hope that they don't make it past. Yeah. <laughs> I need turbo I'm terrible at fighting games. Street, Street Fighter 2, man. Yeah. <laughs> but that's beautiful. I've So I have both a consoleized MVS and an AES. But I've got the stock controller, obviously, and I would love one of those. I would love one of those. Yeah, Yeah. no, Poe, it, it, it is farther up than what you would normally have, um, I think, on the standard AES. But... Um, it actually still feels really good. It's not. It's not as bad as you would think. It would probably feel more like an arcade, though, right? It, it, it you does. Your hand on it. Yeah, yeah, it feels a lot more like an arcade cabinet, you know, like playing on than than a normal console sized arcade stick. So, okay, that's sweet. All right. 
All right, Phil, you said you had new exciting stuff. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, I may have shown this on the last episode, but I think it's worth showing again. Uh, and I've actually, and I play, I play this on the, the uh, show also. So, uh, I I know what I know what it is. You did yeah, show you it last do. time, but it's worthy. It's worthy. <laughs> it's worthy. <laughs> this. <laughs> this is <laughs> this is my Atari fight stick with trackball and spinner. Oh, where's the spinner? Anyway. This thing is so sweet. It's got um, two volcano buttons. Start select. Uh, eight action buttons. Way more on. buttons than an Atari ever needs. Yeah. Well, it's it's got the Atari name on it, but yes, it's I know. got <laughs> it's got it's got uh, buttons on the side for pinball if you want to uh, program. And um, on the end, it's got a USB. I guess that's a USB B or USB B. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And anyway, uh, it is compatible with Windows, Mac, and Linux. Um, it'll run on a Raspberry Pi. Um, I emulate with this uh, on my chan on the channel all the time. Um, and it's 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 sweet. I actually had bought one for my son, and um, think because he has a Raspberry Pi, thinking he would use it. I had got it on sale. This was a Micro Center exclusive, and they quit making them. And uh, he he wasn't using them. It was brand new a box. He never. He, and so, long and short of it is, Operation Shutdown begged me. He found out I had got it. He begged me, and I sold it to him. And so, uh, he, my son, sold it to me back for 150 bucks. How how much were they? Uh, how much were they first sold for? Uh, two hundred. I was gonna say two hundred. Yeah, okay. they were two. They were two hundred. They were yeah, Micro Center exclusive. Uh, because I think they had the right like to do some Atari look branding and stuff and. Uh, because uh, the controller itself is uh, made by Thundersticks, uh, you know, which is, uh, you know, the Glenn Retro Show. Uh, uh, you have to. It's, it's, I'm uh, really sorry. You've been Thundersticked. <laughs> it's, 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 uh, it's heavy. The buttons it's are. It's like the very, coolest suitcase in the world. It's Just... it, it's a very it's very good qual. They're very good quality. The 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 action on the buttons are very good. The the uh, trackball. It's very responsive. The spinner is uh, fluid and spins very nicely. I've not had mm -hmm. any issues with it. The uh, um, I I don't I don't know that there's a I don't think there's I don't know if there's a restrictor on the um, joystick joystick though. I haven't I don't know if I've opened it or not. I don't know if there's a joy a restrictor in there or not. There there'd be, be some, if, there there'd be something. It'd be if, either, if there uh, is, it's an eight way. Let me see. Oh, it's one hundred percent an eight way. They wouldn't. Yeah. If it if, it, be, if it, it had to be turned it pretty freely. Yeah. If it had it, a four way gate in there, it would be an it's, optional it's accessory that you could swap. It's definitely not four way. Yeah. yeah. It's definitely not four way. I can feel it's not four way. I mean, what you, what you'd be able to tell is if um like if you can go at an angle and you like really feel the the edge in there when you go. Yeah, yeah, an angle, I know that. I know uh, that, it's not that, a that, that then it, then it's a square gate. Um, yeah. but uh, um, which is like for eight way stuff, but uh, it could but it could also be a round gate, which is also used for eight way. Stuff. Yeah, it's just, it's it, all that's what I'm saying because it seems real smooth when I turn it around. If it's real smooth turning it around, it's likely a circle gate in it. Yeah, it's real smooth. I don't know if I like that. <laughs> but it, as I've come to learn, it's it's all personal preference of, yeah. of folks. Of what but, I, I like, uh, I like a Stargate. It takes you out of the worlds. <laughs> <laughs> but Mike, I was playing a game. I can't remember the name of the, the what the game it was. It, I think it was a. A Pac-Man style game. I can't remember what it was, but I was playing it with a, uh, uh, um, this, <laughs> and uh, yeah. I wasn't doing so good. And uh, I said I can't do it anymore. So I said I'm going to pull this out, and I, I put, 
I put and you that like in doubled there. your score right after. Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It 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 doubled my score right away. And you know what? You'd probably double it again if it was a four way stick. So all the Pac Man style games so much easier with a four way oh, stick. Oh, definitely, definitely. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, but yeah, Jason, it was a two hundred uh, originally uh, U.S. and then. Uh, they fire sailed it with a lot of the other Thunderstick stuff that they carried. Oh, like the track I wish stuff. I had known I would have bought one. Yeah, so um, they fire sailed them at like a hundred bucks for that, and then also um, if you do get into the Thunderstick uh, products that Glenn makes, uh, you know they had those like highly discounted as well. But uh, unfortunately, um, it's not available anymore. Um, your, your only way you're going to be able to find it now is probably through eBay. You know, if someone is. Or a game swap, or if you're really right. lucky, like a Craigslist or something like that. Yeah. Well, people people that are selling them are scalping them. It, I mean, they're 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 hard to find. And, and it's people. not like you can sneak that under your jacket. <laughs> no, that thing. No, that thing's humongous. <laughs> I, I mean, I because uh, I have one myself, and I and I think. Uh, just the height wise, I, it has to be at least four inches. Yeah, it's at least so, four inches. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah, it's a. Beast. I mean, it's heavy <laughs> enough. It's got a handle. It's got a. Yeah. It's it's so it's it's so heavy. They gave they gave a handle. <laughs> you know. That's so. good because it means it doesn't move around when you're playing it. Absolutely. All right. <laughs> Here's here's probably my. I think this is probably our last lap. So this is uh, this okay. is going to be my finale. Um, save this one for last because honestly, I think it's the coolest one. This is a Nintendo 64 controller from Japan. There are only two games it works with. It is a train controller. And it is actually designed to match. The one I have is not in the best shape. They had a nicer one. But it was like an extra 50 bucks. I was like, you know what? I'm going to play this twice, and then it's going to sit in a box. It's fine. Um, but it actually mimics the controls of an actual Japanese transit train. So you've got your, I believe that, yeah, your speed here, speed of the train. And then you steer the train like, okay, we're going to that track or that track. Uh, you've got your ABC buttons. You select and start, and that's it. Um, but that is for use with, I only have one of the two games, but there is a sequel to this game, Go 64, and you're literally just, and it's not even, here, let me cover my face so the facial recognition doesn't try to focus on me. There we go. Please do that more often, thank you. Yes, yeah. When I was in <laughs> film school, we called the lens cap the ugly filter. Um, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, Go 64, it's literally, there's nothing thrilling about this game. It's not like you're steering a train through volcanoes and stuff like that. You're just doing the daily route. So, like, if you were a train driver, uh, that was your occupation, and you went home <laughs> and you wanted to work some more, you could sit and play on your Nintendo 64, and I'm sure it would be just doing your daily thing. <laughs> At home. One thing really cool, I call it, like, I don't know what this is for, but I call it a cup holder. So it seems so, like a cup holder to me. That's yeah, what so, it looks so, like. When you're at work, when you're at work and you're you're doing your steering and your speed, you can put your coffee there. And you just, okay. Oh, this is Mimico stop. <laughs> that's pretty cool but it's a cool little oddity i like it a lot it's definitely cool and it's definitely odd yes so how much was that retail like retail i have no idea obviously it would have been in yen this was never released in north america the game is japanese um i paid so complete in box with the one game i paid 90 bucks for it but I talked him down from like 120. That was at Portland Retro Gaming Expo, not last year, but the year before, 2022. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, if we got time. I here, think this might be this. This might be the last the one. Finale. The finale. Oh, it well, better be good, Brian. It better oh, be oh, good. Oh man, I don't. <laughs> 
I, I should have saved my Neo Geo one then for, yeah. for this point. <laughs> sure. but, but uh no, I the last one here and it's again, like this it, is a Nintendo controller. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. One. <laughs> well, you know, it kind of is like, like a, one a little bit, but uh yeah, it's all um, right. So, so yeah, so this is the actual original uh you know that's Atari's... anti club Mac. Oh, thing. you know what? That's a cool controller. Yeah, that's cool. It's a, so, it's a neat piece. I'm kidding. Yeah. So this is the original um, Atari uh, 7800 controller uh, in Europe, the CX78. Now, um, you know, I know the current Atari is uh, remaking this, the CX78 Plus for the Atari 2600 Plus system. Um, you know, it'll be interesting to see how close it feels to the original, if it feels exact or not. But uh, uh, with it, you had your uh, button one, button two, kind of in a NES layout. And then uh, with the little, it was kind of interesting how it had the little grooves in there because I think they kind of thought you were going to hold it a lot like this to play, um, which is kind of interesting. I don't know and what so, they were thinking. Yeah, I mean, because because that's almost that's the only thing I can think of with those grooves. It's just they thought you were going to lay this on a table and like tap that way. But um, but then you also have uh, the well, yeah, so you can make use of that really good joystick. I know, right? <laughs> uh, yeah, because you have a D-pad with this little joystick nub that screws into it because you can... Um, Master good. System did that too. It's odd. Yeah, but um, no, I just dropped it. But, uh, but you can take it out and just do straight D-pad with it. Um, you know, again, however you want there. But, you know, it's not a thick controller by any means. It holds in the hand pretty well. Um, the one thing I will say though, is where the D pad itself isn't like terrible. Um, the buttons here just aren't the, the feel of them just aren't the best. Um, which is why I definitely prefer like an NES modded controller for like the Atari system over using this. I mean, uh, if I had to tell I wonder this... where we can get those, Brian. <laughs> Gee, I don't know, <laughs> but, um, I might have one or two of those. I think you got more than that, actually. <laughs> but uh, um, but no. But if I had this over the US seventy eight hundred controller, by all means, I would have preferred this any day of the week. Yes, so. yeah, yeah. The US seventy eight hundred controller. I I hate the ones. So ColecoVision seventy eight hundred fifty two hundred. Why you put that joystick at the top? Because it always feels like it, especially. Like, believe it or not, of those three, the 5200 is probably the best because it's you're not fighting with it. The ColecoVision is really, you know, stiff joystick. The 7800, not a heck of a lot better. And they always feel like they're pulling out of your hand. Right. And like Poe said, it's just, it's not very comfortable. And I think part of that, and you may agree, Poe, is just, it's the size of these buttons and the spacing of them. And that's why, again, I think they literally thought you were going to set this on a table and just you know, tap that way compared to actually holding it in your hand like an NES controller. Uh, because if these weren't as big of buttons and they were closer together, I think it would be different. But like they're 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 kind of stiff when you, when you're hit. You know, you don't have that nice press like you do on an And NES there's like button. a full finger width between them. Ex exactly. So so it's not like NES where you can roll. Right. There is down. there there's no there's no rolling with with this. I mean, you have to really make an effort to go both sides. So mm. So that's where it'll be interesting how people feel cuz again, that's this isn't a widely I mean, I think people know about it, but they're not widely available here in the US. I mean, I think Best Electronics still has some new old stock available of them. Um, but given the price of them and stuff, you just don't have them out in the wild much. Uh, so whenever they do finally release the remake here in May for the 2600 plus, it'll be interesting to see how people feel on, on it. So. Yeah, I, I, I did some research because so I actually don't have one of those and I was wanting to get one. And this was <clears throat> months ago and Brian was like, oh, I have an extra one. Just, you know, tell me what you think is it's fair and all that. And I look on eBay and they're okay. Granted, with the low ends without the thumbstick, but they're selling for anywhere from eighteen to like sixty bucks. And it's like, how do I make a? Oh, I think this is fair. Let's just, <laughs> I'm terrible. I'm terrible at that. <clears throat> yeah, especially among friends, right? Yeah, they're all over the map. It's like I don't want to pay much, but I don't want to be like. You don't want hey, to I'll give your you the friends. eighteen. I could buy this one for eighteen. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I understand that. 
which by the way i had a friend over uh over he, he had a sega master system but and um brian makes a uh, very nice nes style um i like the dog bone style he makes nes style and the i don't like the NES dog bone style. i love them I love them. I, I I, like it's the it's because they angle the buttons on it. It's like, what do you know? I I, I just like I just I don't know what it is. I just like the feel of it. Anyway, they're they're comfortable, but I hate them. Anyway, uh, I have them. I have them for the uh, uh, master system as well. Anyway, uh, my friend he had a master system when he was a kid, and he hadn't played in forever. And he, long story short, we were playing Astro Warrior, which he had when he was a kid. We popped that thing in there and. He was like, man, I haven't played that good since because, <laughs> you know, because you know how mushy the. The difference between much. a good controller and oh, yeah. a bad one, you know, it doesn't when you first feel, you know, have it in your hand, you don't feel a huge difference. But there is a heck of a lot of difference between like an NES controller and, and that 7800 controller, or even a Master System controller, like just a world of difference. Yeah, yeah. Well, on that note, on that note. Yeah, actually, one quick thing before you you sign us off is just uh, for those uh, that are watching, uh, um, our friend Casey does a podcast uh, around uh, 930, the Intellivision Gamer. Um, yes. And uh, just if you're interested, um, I'm going to be on there for a little bit tonight after this. So, oh, uh, wow. um, so again, he asked me to come on to talk about some stuff. So, so I'll be there here in a little bit. So, uh, if you're Very interested, cool. go check out his channel in Television Gamer. Excellent. And while we're on here, um, we have uh, penciled in also. Uh, we have a uh, special guest on the 16th of April, a gentleman by the name of MC Murr, who uh, is somewhat of an expert on uh, video game hunting. Uh, not only hunting, but how to build your collection from hunting. Um, if you want to become a collector, um, build your collection that way. And then on the 24th, uh, we're going to have Lewis Hill from Muddy Vision. Um, he has done 7,820, uh, 600 games. And actually, I don't, has he done any NES games? I don't know if he's done any. I don't think so. I don't think so. No, I don't think so. Anyway, but anyway, so we got some exciting, um, um podcast coming up in april so uh, yeah. you guys want to make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on your notifications but um speaking of speaking of game hunting uh obviously you noticed a few comments from uh jason in the chat uh he's on my side because we're simul streaming again um jason absolutely check out uh retro bliss gaming channel that's where we're simulcasting this um but uh, I know him. I haven't seen him in person for years, but I used to see him all the time at all the game swaps uh, because I know him through video game hunting and, and all that stuff. Oh, so that's really he, cool. He, he's kind of, and, and he made a comment earlier that he's not huge into the kind of pre NES stuff, but he's always interested in seeing um, and learning about it and having better knowledge about it. So, you know, Phil's a great channel to follow for that, but thank you very much. And you're exactly the kind of person that we want watching this. It's like, oh, I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know that. That's cool. Excellent. Well, Jason, thanks for watching. We appreciate you being here, my friend. Thank you so much. So with that, you guys will see you next time. And um, we're not, not we're gonna have a we're gonna have a show next week. We don't have a, a topic exactly <laughs> planned out, but we definitely are gonna have a show next week. So anyway, we appreciate you guys being here. So with that, we're signing off. Take care, guys. We'll see you next time. Bye bye.